iOS 7 Beta 2 gets released and it now supports the iPad. The iPhone 5S shows up in another photo with the smarter dual flash, and reports have the Galaxy Note 3 not growing much in display size. I'm Jaime Rivera. And yeah, I do feel your pain. I hate Mondays too. But this is Pocket Now Daily. Let's start today off with some Samsung news. Even though Android tablets haven't really taken off, that doesn't mean the company has not put us a truckload of variants of the same tablet. But such is the case of the Samsung Galaxy Tab 3, which will be available on July 7th in the United States. And even though the specifications are nothing out of the ordinary, you know that thing is gonna be retailing for 200 bucks. That's gonna be the entry price tag. And then obviously for the different variants, there are gonna be different price tags, but it is really compelling. Links in the description for details of 200 bucks. Speaking of Samsung, we've had rumors for the last year of what the display size on the Galaxy Note 3 is going to be like. First we heard 5.9 inches, then 6.3 inches, and then we got the Galaxy Mega Smartphone, so we know where that's going. But according to a very trusted source that we have, it's going to be a 5.7 inch display. And it's interesting that it's not growing much from the Galaxy Note 2 that's at 5.5 inches. But then again, how big is a smartphone for it to still be usable? So 5.7 inches, is that okay with you guys? Leave us a comment. Now let's talk about some deals. Over the weekend, we heard that AT&T is dropping the price tag on all their smartphones, even the ones that were released now. I mean, the last couple of days, the Galaxy S4 active by 50%. So it doesn't matter which smartphone you want. It's 50% off from now to the end of June if you buy the phone online. So links in the description for the procedure. And then we've got Walmart, who's also dropping the price tag on the iPhones permanently, meaning you can get the iPhone 5 for 130 bucks at Walmart, regardless of when you buy it, which is kind of interesting. So again, links in the description for details on that as well. Now let's move over to Apple as the company has now released their beta 2 of iOS 7 and even though it's got some enhancements to Siri and some bug fixes here and there, the only cool thing is that it actually now runs on the iPad and even though a lot of people are celebrating over that, uh, links in the description, watch our video on our hands-on of iOS 7 on the iPad, uh, not everything is cool. And finally, for the interesting news of the day, we've got some leaked photographs of the dual flash of the iPhone 5S, and as it turns out, it's not really a dual flash. One light is the flash, and then the other light is actually orange, just like you get on point-and-shoot digital cameras to help the camera assist itself with light and determine if it needs flash or not in automatic settings. So could it be that we will be getting a smarter performing iPhone 5S for low-light photography? Uh, could be, well, but that leads me to the question of the day anyways. Uh, how often do you actually use the flash on your smartphone? Is it a feature that you're looking for? Is it something that you want? In my particular case, it depends on the phone. Obviously, the Lumia 920 doesn't need a flash, and so doesn't the HTC One, but the only phone that actually does flash well is the iPhone 5, in my personal opinion, so that's the only reason why I use it on that phone. But leave us a comment down below. Do you want a smarter flash, or would you like better low-light photography? Of course, as always, for an earlier scoop of everything that's happening in the smartphone and tablet world, make sure you follow us on pocketnow.com, subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You can also follow me on Twitter at Jaime underscore Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you tomorrow.